For centuries, the Renaissance has been renowned as a time of artistic genius and innovation. Architecture, sculpture, and painting in particular saw rapid improvements in realism as skilled hands began working in oil paints. But did technological tools enable these unprecedented advances, or was it technical skill alone? Physicist Charles Falco wondered that very question a few years ago when he heard famed contemporary artist David Hockney asking if scientific inventions might have aided the old masters. When David Hockney had an article written about him in the New Yorker magazine, I contacted David Hockney and I happened to be in Los Angeles. I visited and saw what he was doing and it ended up being by far the most intense scientific collaboration of my entire career. Inside Science. But what David Hockney had, had collected for himself were color photocopies of all the paintings from Western Europe that looked to him that something other than simple eyeballing, is his term, were used. I looked at the paintings, and one in particular caught my eye on my very first visit, and it was clear to me that optics had been used. The painting was Lorenzo Lotto's husband and wife, from the early 16th century. Falco noticed something odd about the table covering's geometric pattern. As the pattern recedes from view, it also slips out of focus. Falco recognized this as a telltale sign of an optical instrument and theorized that Lotto had employed a curved glass to magnify individual parts of the scene as he worked. We've published, I forget exactly the number, something like eight scientific publications. The scientific community has largely received these as really very interesting. We calculate things, we have equations, we have estimates. Any scientist can plug in numbers and see we've done this correctly. The art history community isn't so thrilled with what we've done. Falco points to the camera lucida, a simple invention that allowed artists to trace complicated scenes. However, Falco maintains that the camera lucida can't be compared to the sophisticated technologies employed by more masterful painters. When you project images at half-life size and small depths of field and things are upside down, it's much more difficult than you might think. And so Ansel Adams, people think, well, uh, photography solves everything. I defy most people to take a photograph as nicely composed, nicely exposed, as Ansel Adams did with photographs. So photography, optics, doesn't solve everything, but largely people sort of think it does. And I think that's one resistance of art historians. Undeterred, Falco looks forward to discovering new evidence of optical technology in historical works. In particular, he's interested in the ways masterful artists surpassed the science to create true works of art. If you go to a, a, a museum, like the Metropolitan Museum in New York, the best paintings are on the wall. 95% of their collection is in the basement. One uh, premise I have is the lesser artists, the ones that are, are not quite as accomplished, would not have been able to obscure the features of the optical projection as well. If I can show a particular feature was created with the use of optics, but some aspect of that feature deviates from what optics did. Why did the artist do that? This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.